going to Australia, I really love the marine aspect because there are things that I've, I couldn't imagine existing that live there and we saw them and it gives you a, a very different perspective on biology. So the course is called uh, Adelphi in Australia. The purpose of the course is to really allow Adelphi students to get out and have some field experience, to get out and sort of see these, this, the, the Great Barrier Reef and other habitats in Australia, uh, the rainforest, and there's some also some um, dry habitats that we visit as well. It was beyond belief. You, you had to keep pinching yourself because you couldn't believe what you were seeing. The colors were just so vibrant, especially in the corals. It looked like it was out of a textbook, but it was real. We spend a lot of time out in the woods, out on the island, out in the water. So we are introducing our students to that sort of lifestyle, that sort of approach to learning, that sort of investigation. The rainforest, we stayed in the rainforest. We stayed uh, overnight in the rainforest and engaged in uh, night walks, first a guided night walk and then uh, night walks on our own. And one of the places we stay is open air cabins. You open your front door and you were in the rainforest. Actually one of the places, it didn't even have walls. It had sort of mosquito nets. <laughs> so you're living in the rainforest, which means you can hear everything. And it's one thing to sit them on a trail and have them listen, but it's another thing to listen throughout the night. We did a, a night walk and um, you couldn't see anything. We had we all had our fanny packs with flashlights and we all had to like look for frogs and different kinds of bugs. We saw animals and even plants while we were out that night that we would have otherwise never seen. When we're looking mostly in the rainforest they're primarily focused on local plants, birds, insects, um, but then we're getting a lot better at seeing marsupials which we don't have here except for possums. We held koalas, <laughs> which I never thought in my life I would hold a koala. It was like holding a puppy, kind of, but they're very soft and they kind of hold onto your shoulders like a baby would. And that was another one of those moments where you just felt like, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. We've gone out snorkeling almost every day, and that's, so that's one of the highlights of, I think, the, the trip for everyone is just get in the water and just explore. And usually we have to um, sort of wrestle students out of the water back into the boats because they want to stay in and snorkel some more. And so they're looking at fish and sort of identifying fish when we're, out, when we're snorkeling, or corals, or sea cucumbers, any number of, of animals and, and plants that we see. Heron Island was my favorite because I really loved the water and we really got to dive into our topics and we learned so much just within those 10 days. While we're on the island, um, anything can happen and, and we've been very lucky. The last two years, we saw sea turtles hatching. So we got to watch the babies as they moved out to sea. It was pretty amazing. Pretty much it was just a lot of swimming and enjoying the weather and collecting data. So we got a lot of work done, but you never really could tell that you're getting all this work done because you're just enjoying the environment and what was around you so much, so it made it very easy to learn. We also did independent research projects. Um, my project was on giant clams, and if um, I was testing whether or not the size of the giant clam correlated with the size of its substrate. It was a little bit scary then to see how important the, the barrier reef is, and, and you realize, you know, people are saying it's gonna be gone in a few years, and after seeing it, you just can't imagine that being gone. It's, there's, it really, it's really difficult to describe what it's like to see a manta ray with a um, well, wingspan of a nine feet or greater um, go swimming by in the distance. It's, a, it's, very, sort of, um, it's like very exciting to see that. I feel like going to this remote place with all these people who are in the same boat as you with this, but different backgrounds or different studies, but just as passionate, really keeps fueling that energy, that passion that you have to keep doing what you've been doing with this research. You, you don't know what it's like until you actually go out and see it. And just that's, it's exactly that way with archaeology as well. You, you can see slides and you can see photographs, but 
it's not, it's, you aren't really learning until you actually do it.